Welcome back again. You're still watching us here on Nile Cruise, our final segment, last but not least, the most interesting, at least as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Very interesting uh, topic we're going to be talking about. And maybe what's more interesting is that it's something new that's been ongoing and spreading for only the past 10 years. Um, it's not just something that you would read uh, over the Internet or hear from people um, on screens about um, inner peace and, you know, the chakras and the positive energy and um, emotional healing and all that but actually it, it does exist people have had uh, 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 an experience personally with this technique in particular which we're going to be talking about today and our guest herself had had this experience and um, it is our pleasure for her maybe to tell us more about what this technique is about very much delighted to have joining us here Mohammed on our cruise uh, mrs. Meret al Sukari. she's an emotional freedom healing technique expert thank you for joining us hello thank you for having me Thank you. Thank you, Miret. Uh, so, first thing is, uh, the beginning of what is meant by positive energy in general, can you define that for us and, and how to base the positive phase in, in each behavior? So, about 20 years ago, something came out in psychology called positive psychology. And they started thinking that there are people who are more positive, and there's a lot to study in that. But positive psychology, they found out that people who are positive, they actually have a default, which means that the parts of their brain that light up when they see any situation are different from people who aren't positive. So there's a scientific thing. They have a default or a way of thinking. So immediately they think, so what's good about this? They do it naturally. But then they started teaching people how to do that. So there is a way for a person to become more positive. Mm. And actually, um, I've created a program just to do that. It's called Let the Sun Shine In. To actually train your, sign, your brain to see what's good, no matter what the situation is. So everything is teachable right now. There's so much science about how the mind works. So it, you can change, you can actually teach yourself to be more positive. Mm -hmm. mm. um, Marat, we as human beings, and I think it's only part of our nature that w we would go through different phases of our lives or experience uh, several traumas or different traumas that would definitely leave or have an effect on us. Maybe we don't see it at that time, we don't psychologically understand it, but definitely by time um, at least those who are around us become aware of. Um, your technique is a very brand new technique for my ears, uh, although I read a lot about um, you know spiritual healing and so forth. Um, spiritual freedom healing technique. What is this about exactly? So it's emotional freedom technique. It's actually 30 years old. It has been used all over the world. It's been translated in over 40 languages. There's lots of research on it now. When I studied, there wasn't this much research. Now there's over 100 clinical studies on it by top universities in the UK, in uh, the States, in uh, Australia especially. And it's a technique that joins the mind with the body so it's asking the mind to affect things on the body. So that is num it is to it is called by Harvard Medical School the number one stress relief tool on earth. So that's number one. It's an amazing um, trauma relief. It's used by the U.S. Uh, Army. It's used by the U.K. Army. It's used in Israel uh, because there were some issues with something called PTSD. People don't get over PTSD for 10 years, 12 years, sometimes mm -hmm. never. EFT has already proven it can get over uh, EF, uh, sorry, PTSD in four or five sessions. And that's why the U.S. government created something called the U.S. EFT Veteran Program. Mm. So this is a very important technique for the world. Now let's come back to the normal person. We all, as you said, have traumas. Some of them look too small, we don't recognize, but they affect us down we'll the road. Start as a very early age as well. Yes, child. also. Mm. And uh, things happen and then we make meanings. So let's say your father, I don't want to go into it too much today, but mm. your father ne always didn't give you what you want. Like you ask for a toy, he doesn't bring it. You ask for a bicycle, he brings you, uh, I don't know, something else. Then what ha this is an actual case I had of a man. When you're grown up, you make a decision, you never get what you want. Mm. So you go around in the world thinking, I will not get married to the person I want. I will not get the promotion I want. Life doesn't give me what I want. This is a trauma, and it made a decision in your mind. And what happens is, is actually it's written in neural pathways. The inf you have now downloaded on your brain this information. Like this word looks like, I'm not going to get what I want. 
So that could be a trauma. I'm talking about a small trauma. Of course, some children go through very severe traumas, very ill uh, parents, very abusive parents, emotionally or physically or uh, sexually, or you know what I mean. So it all affects us as we grow up because we're carrying all this stuff with us. And we operate from our system. So this is an operating system exactly like the computer. So the operating system has all this information that we've downloaded about the world. We usually download it between the age of zero and seven. And now they're proving not even zero and seven, it's b while you're in the, in the, Im in the stomach. Mm. Because children, babies hear and they feel. So if the man and woman are fighting all the time, the baby's already fearful of coming. He creates neural pathways for fear about the world. So anyway, let's say we carry so much of that. The emotional freedom technique is a technique where we touch the body, it stimulates parts of the brain, and it sends a, a message to the body that you are safe, basically. Now they know what it does. I don't want to go in science, this is not a science forum, mm. but it basically stops the stress response in the body. So you start to feel safe. Now, uh, you, you, you mentioned something very interesting at the beginning when you said that the people who have positive energy, uh, this is like God-given, it's, it's a default. Uh, um, so does that mean that the people who are accused of <laughs> spreading negative energy uh, should feel better about themselves because it's a default as well, after all. Yes, they, they have to, to work on that for their benefit and for the benefit of those around them. But at least can they be excused and, and, and they shouldn't be so hard on themselves and, and other people should not be so harsh on them because it's a default. Well, let me tell you, um, let's, nobody should be harsh on themselves anyway in anything. But they are, um, we do ask them to work on themselves because we are asked to do that on Earth. This is what we do here on Earth. So, um, and it doesn't take long. Scientifically, it takes between 21 and 90 days. There's different research to change your default. And this is NASA research that they're saying 90 days. Before they used to say 21 days. Some people said 40 days. So I always say it's 21 to 90 days. But within the first 21 days, you will find a change. Because negativity, if you're experiencing a negativity, you are affecting everyone. And the bad, the sadly, you're affecting your children. You're also teaching them to have that default. So you've met people where everything they think about, it goes suddenly to the negative. And you're shocked, like, no, it's not such a big deal. What, wh why are you thinking like that? This reminds me of a young woman who had a PhD who came to me. I want to tell you this story. She came to lose weight. But when we started talking, obviously, we had something more important to work on. She was a very successful IT person, going to work in the UK, some top woman. And she told me something very interesting. She said, when I went to do my studies in the UK, I stayed with a roommate and she said I got really shocked because I, the way I was brought up everything was scary and everybody you should be scared from humanity you should be scared from situations mm -hmm. and this roommate did not do that and she said I didn't understand how she thinks and we actually worked to have her this default through a certain program because she needed to see that the world is safe and she said her parents are terrified of the world what I'm trying to say there are people really fearing life they think everyone is out to get them. They think life is only going to throw them uh, problems. And um, I'd like to just add something. Einstein said something very, he was a philosopher, by the way. He's a scientist and a philosopher. He has many quotes. He said, the biggest and the most important decision you have to make in your life is, is this world a friendly world or a hostile world? And from there, your life flows. And this is very, very profound. So my answer to you, n we, we don't want them to, to feel uh, they have to hassle themselves, but they need to work on themselves. Yes, um, Marek, I want to also, because the way you speak about it sounds um, like it is going to really heal the world. <laughs> and um, my question here is, well, does it really heal everything that goes around psychologically, at least with individuals around Almost the world? everything, it's um, true. We have very severe cases, let's say the uh, multiple personality disorders. We have um, cases that really even medical interference or medications had failed to, 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 to correct. So does this um, new kind of healing or therapy 
uh, heal a anything in the world or in the in psychological system of a human being. And um, it is 100% medication free. Is that what you're trying to say? It's medication free. It's using your fingers on your body. No, we do not claim that we can do the very severe like schizophrenia, uh, multiple personalities, bipolar. Although people who work with it improve. There's a lot of research on that too. But the point is, it's called emotional freedom. It's everything based on your emotions. When you have uh, a bipolar, or there's actually a physical issue happening inside. We're, talk and, uh, we're talking about people who don't have this physical issue. They just have gone through a lot of things in life, a lot of experiences in life. And I'm not saying that they have to be horrendous experiences. As I gave the example, someone didn't get the gift. I had a man one time, I was on TV, and the man told me, uh, one of the helpers, his father never gave him for the Byram any money. And he said every time, he's 45 at that time, every time Aid comes, he was crying. It's still there. The trauma is still there because it has a lot of meanings. Now he has money, he's rich, he's well off, but he still feels so bad that he didn't get that experience. So we are all carrying so the traumas and small traumas. We call them small traumas. But the point is emotional freedom is exactly that. Get rid of that. And then something switches in the brain because when they they actually have um, they have seen the scans of the brain with something called functional MRI, and when they remind you of that event, they see what lights up, mm. and they they do 10 to 15 minutes of tapping, and they take pictures of what happened in your brain. There's an amazing video, and thank God it's been translated in Arabic by the founder, explaining how this thing works, and and, and we can find it on YouTube. You can find it on YouTube. It's <laughs> Gary Craig is the name, and he Gary has a Craig. Gary Craig is the Gary founder. Craig. And uh, yes, uh, you said something. Is this going to heal the world? It is going to heal a lot of things. It's the new age thing. It's 30 years old, actually. For 20 years, nobody was listening well, to it's him. Definitely, it's definitely a new invention. Getting it's to know more about what's happening in your brain. It, it, it's right. new old as well. It's, it's new, new old. old. Because I mean, it stems. Yes, you're so correct. I, it yeah. stems from the acupuncture. He uses the acupuncture, which is 5,000 years ago, plus the very new, not, not, uh, not Freud, 80s psychology, when they found out language programs the brain. So mm. it uses neuro-linguistic programs. What about yoga and, 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 and Buddhism and Confucianism? All that stuff and, works. Yeah, I, I mean, there is a link, right? No, there's no link. No? This is a pure mind-body uh, okay. technique mm -hmm. that affects certain parts of the brain. So when you tap, you affect the part of the brain now we know called the amygdala. And the amygdala sends out certain responses. And then certain hormones go in the body. So for happiness, when you do a lot of tapping, people say you're bliss out. When I have people, they say like, is this a drug? It's not a drug. It mm. makes you happier because it's sending all these happy hormones. So how far uh, is um, this type of therapy or healing process related to the law of attraction, the universe and energy? Um, because um, maybe I I in our world or community, we always say, oh, today is going to be the dark day or today is not really a good day. But what really happens is that when you wake up with this negative thought and energy, you attract you anything created. negative around you. How far is this true? Because a lot of people who are too logical do not really understand that this is a true fact there is a law of attraction and 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 and, and it's energy. very related because uh, the law of attraction is, is very interesting you make a decision and you say today is a good day or today is that's the simple part and then what happens is there's a part of your brain again that's called <coughs> the reticular activating system it starts operating to prove to you what you said mm. so if you say it's going to be a horrible day you will find things around you that make it horrible. Or you will see it this way, at least. Yeah, you will find, your mind will Except start. Except someone just sort of hits your yeah, car, you're you going to want to find. It's, but it's how you have perceive yes. things, and after all. The I mean reticular activating so system, that's its job, because <coughs> we get stimuli of everything all the time, thousands of messages, and it, the reticular decides what to see because of what you ordered it. So if you told it today's a horrible day, it starts to find all the proof. Because <laughs> your mind is, there's a man, a doctor, who wrote a book called The Genie in Your Genes. So The Genie in Your Genes actually talks about that. You have a genie who's listening to you all the time. So if you tell it, today I want to see everything beautiful, no matter what. So The Genie says, let me show her. There's flowers, there's a beautiful woman, there's a beautiful uh, man, there's a, uh, a pool, there's this, there's that. And if you tell it, it's going to be horrible, I'm going to say, I was late, uh, it's so hot, it's this. And it's the exact same situation. You're in the exact same place and you have two yeah. people talking. So there's a lot of it's science. It's the perception. It's a perception. Mm. And the perception means which parts of your brain are lighting up. B Mirat, I wanted to ask you about this because, Yasmin, we, uh, it's, it's been all about 
football <laughs> and, 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 and the African Cup of Nations, so we cannot end the Which episode. I don't understand, Mohammed. I, I, no, I'm not too no, shy to say that. W w <laughs> no without, idea. No, you do. Everybody does. I mean, football, that, that's why it's loved by everybody by, around the world, because yeah. it's so easy to understand. Um, I, I get a sense that Mohammed Salah, that great guy, has this emotional oh, yes. freedom. I mean, I, I just Tell got me. that sense. Tell me about that. He gives positive energy, I swear to you. The second question is, how can the fans, the spectators, the audience, uh, the 100,000 who are cheering our team, give them the positive energy? Just by cheering, they're giving him a lot of positivity. And uh, let me go back to Mohamed Salah, because yeah. I'm like you, I don't watch TV, I don't watch even football too much. But of course, when you have a big national he is a event, and it's you maybe have to watch. way beyond just him being a soccer player. Yeah. Yes, of yeah, course. Yeah. His face is very calm, it's very nice. I love looking at his face, his smile. And then also he brings in a lot of positivity because for me he does something called collective consciousness. He sends a huge message to our world, you can do it, no matter who you are. You don't have to be connected, you don't have to be rich, you don't have to be... I mean, you can be a normal person and do that. He does everything it. with tranquility, if I yes. may say so. I mean, he, he has makes inner it look peace. You can yeah. see and the inner peace mm. he shows on people's faces. I was just going to talk to you about that. I was just going to talk to you about that because um, the, the, the a lot of people um, they 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 have uh, issues with anger control or uh, controlling mm. their emotions, mm. and then eventually it would show up on their face, and on the long run. It would just, mm. I mean, I've been ar around people where it really it would give me and them the grudges, like negative yeah. energy. So they don't want to be around me. I don't want to be around them. And uh, vice versa. If you go into a place, people would say there is positive energy in the place. Uh, this, this has to do with inner peace. And, and, and reaching inner peace, I think, is a very difficult process. It's a difficult process. It requires process. a lot of training. Can you tell us tips? Because a lot of people out there don't understand how important it is to have inner peace. I'll give you a tip that really works, for, and it's not mine. It's one of the best people, Louise Hayes on Earth, who talks about it. I don't know if people will believe it works, but if they do it for 21 days, they'll see a difference. Inner peace actually starts with loving yourself, and most mm. people don't. Yes. We've been taught not to like ourselves by, mm -hmm. you didn't do well in or school, doubt ourselves. your head yes. doesn't look nice, you did this wrong, it's always the negative. Mm -hmm. So what she did, Louise Hayes, uh, she died two years ago, Louise Hayes has a book called You Can Heal Your Life, and she has a lot of tools. One of them, that I like one of these tools, is called the mirror tool, I have a video on it on TV on uh, YouTube in English and in Arabic. And all you do is I want you to look in the mirror every day and just say your name. Like I would say, Mirat, look in your eyes. I love you. I love you. I love you. No reasons. I don't have to say I love you because you have a master's. I love you because you're helping people. I love you because I don't know you're a good mother. No, I just love you because you're human. Please do that while you're alone because if, if people <laughs> watch you. think you're it. crazy. Yeah. And I want to tell you, it's not easy. There are people who when they look in their eyes, they start crying. There are people, they come say, I can't say I love you at all. I don't like me. But with practice, you start to, s that's the first step in inner but peace. It's not easy, Miret. It's not but, easy. but I remember uh, Yasmin, uh, the great uh, late uh, uh, singer, uh, Whitney Houston, had a song um, wh where she said, learning to love yourself is the greatest love of yes. all. And I, I believed her back then. But it's not easy. It isn't it's easy, but easy. It it's something we should strive for. We do a lot of things that are not easy. This is so simple as a, a tool, and that's why people sometimes undermine easy tools, but it is so powerful. Now, that's just the beginning, but let's start by loving ourselves. Because how in the world are you going to love even your kids? We say we love them, but we abuse them. So that's not real love. Mm. We say, yeah, I love my kids so much, but we talk to them badly. How are you going to love and accept unconditionally your kids? That's if you don't do it yourself. If you don't love you. But the unconditionally. Thing is, how? Yes, unconditionally. Yes, but unconditionally. We yes. love kids unconditionally, and I'm, I would fell in that too. Mm. You, you're beautiful, you do good grades, you're a good girl, you're a good boy. But where is the love unconditionally? We're like, mm. no matter what you do, I love you. The process, Mered, of, because you said the first tip is to love yourself. The process of loving yourself is going to require some steps. As Mohammed said, people are going to think you're crazy if you're That's doing the it beginning. in public. Yeah. But doing this process, Mohammed, really on honestly speaking, you reach the point where you think you're actually possessed because you have two different voices talking in your head and you're confronting yourself with yourself. So you do get to a point during, I think, the 21 days, which I've, it's correctly true, that you think you are going insane. Y you know, there's something wrong. There's somebody else in there Possibly, talking, yeah. <laughs> completely struggling with you mm. on things. So I think confronting yourself with the reality that you wouldn't want to remember or try to, you know, sort of have selective memory on 
Um, is, is, is the second step possibly? What are the other tips? Well, the thing is with emotional freedom techniques, you don't have to go, it's not psychotherapy. You don't, you don't need to talk, it's very gentle. You don't need to talk about your traumas. By tapping even by words that simple, that happened, the mind will find what that is and deal with it. 